these two announcements. Uh, the Azure Data community in Asia Pacific has, uh, uh, now has their own meetup group. If you want to be updated uh, for their events, currently for our events, because a uh, APAC data community is a collaboration between the local uh, user groups from different countries in Asia. Uh, so if you want to be updated with with uh, with those uh, with the, with their event, uh, feel free to check out their meetup group and uh, join. Uh, and then the other announcement that we had earlier is the Singapore Data Platform User Group, our group, is now on the community tenant for Teams. If you want to be part of the Teams channel, wherein you can uh, we you can uh, join the channel, drop a question to everyone, uh, network, and uh, you can network with everyone. We're, we're gonna put up a channel for networking. Uh, so. If you want to join that, you can uh, grab this uh, form and fill up your name and email address, and then we're going to add you to the teams. The old teams that we have, we will try to move the resources to the new one. Uh, but for the users, uh, we will see how we can do it. We, we might ask you guys, uh, we, we might drop you a mail or ask you to fill up a fo the form itself before we transfer you so that just to make sure that everyone wants to be transferred to the new uh, Teams channel. So from now on, uh, all our future events will be through the through this Teams channel, the Singapore Data Platform User Group uh, channel on community teams. All right. Uh, so yeah. on to our second session. Uh, our session, our next session is a infra as a code for automating data pipelines using ARM with our very own uh, Muhammad Asif. He's a Microsoft MVP for Azure. Uh, if you don't know him, he's one of our organizers here in Singapore Data Platform User Group. And he also is very active in organizing for the Azure, Azure Group uh, for Singapore. Uh, he's a certified uh, blockchain architect. And like I said, Microsoft MVP. Uh, I'm gonna pass him the control so we can so we can start. Uh, Thanks, Bill. Thanks. Oh right. uh, yeah, let me share my screen. Okay, are you able to see my screen? Yes, I can see. Okay. Hello everyone. Uh, thanks for staying too late and uh, thanks for joining today. My name is Asif and uh, today I'm going to talk about uh, Infra as a code to automate your data pipelines. It's uh, using ARM templates. About me, I am a solution architect at Number Bank and a Microsoft MVP. And uh, I'm a certified uh, blockchain uh, developer and architect. In today's agenda, we will actually this session came to came to my mind uh, a few few months back because uh, when I was doing uh, the deployment of uh, some resources and uh, I find out the error uh, in basically my development and UAT was working, but the production production got issue. So we deployed some of the resources on uh, Dev and QA, but uh, somehow uh, there was a bug in uh, production. So we find out that uh, you know that there was some script differences in uh, QA dev and production. So in that kind of scenario, uh, this session might be helpful. And uh, actually, it's a uh, quite a beginner session, so you don't need to have any prerequisite about IAC, uh, means infrastructure as code, or about <laughs> or Azure Data Factory, or uh, either uh, DevOps. So maybe I will I will try to touch uh, each topic a bit. OK, just to give an overview. So before going to start is uh, what is IAC infrastructure as a code? OK, so if you talk about infrastructure as a code, it in simple words uh, is a uh, infrastructure as a code means to manage your infrastructure. Uh, means like your networks, virtual machines, load balancer and uh, you know connection topology using configuration files. But uh, means 
the question comes uh, when means where exactly we can use like uh, where exactly we can use infrastructure as a code and uh, in terms of data pipelines uh, in terms of uh, deploying your resources or in any other uh, scenario so as of now means like uh, most of the people are doing uh, like uh, they are sitting down and physically you know deploying the resources uh, and uh, means like uh, configuring your infrastructure but when uh, you are configuring your infrastructure with the help of configuration files, either it is, uh, you know, uh, your uh, bash uh, shell scripting or uh, maybe the ARM templates or maybe some other third party tools like Terraform or uh, Plumi. So that is uh, like infrastructure as a code because you are deploying your resources programmatically and, uh, means, you know, in multiple <coughs> environments. So it because in uh, human you know in humanly human errors might be happen like uh, because when i'm deploying my resources on a dev environment suppose i'm trying to create uh, resources uh, for uh, means deploying a data factory okay so i'm trying to create a resources for the storage and uh, key vault and all other resources so that might be uh, some parameters are different in qa to dev and might be also it's different from uh, you know production to qa so in that kind of scenario, we might face a lot of issues and it might take a lot of time. But when we, uh, you know, generate uh, configuration files for our infrastructure and we deploy with the help of configuration files by passing the parameter in uh, for the dev QA and production. So because configuration file is same and we are just uh, dynamically passing the parameter for a uh, QA dev and in, in production environment. So our uh, there will be no human errors, there will be no, uh, you know, any issues while deploying the resources. So in that kind of cases, it is very helpful uh, either for uh, deploying any kind of resources. Okay. So what exactly uh, it helps to benefits like, uh, because we are in the cloud, uh, you know, cloud era and uh, in terms of while we are deploying the resource, either it's on-premise or uh, maybe your cloud network, because sometimes you might, have, if it's a very complex or big application, so you might need to, you know, scale the application dynamically, and uh, means you need to means sometimes you need to remove the resources because to save the cost and all. So if you are doing manually such kind of things, it might be very tedious task. So. IAC is very helpful to speed up that kind of process because there are configuration files and uh, which can uh, speed up your deployment and uh, there will be a uh, means like you know consistency in your deployment and uh, it will be means you know that who have deployed uh, and what time because all the deployment uh, will be you know in the team so all the team members can uh, collaborate collaborate to each other and uh, means like one person can I mean like, you know three to four people can work on the same data pipelines or maybe same uh, deployment uh, process and it also helps to uh, improve your uh, accountability and change management process because you know that who have deployed this change and because of what and this caused the issue and uh, the th third thing is like it also helps to reduce your cost because you know that if the you can put the conditional statement to you know to deploy your uh, resources for if you are going to you know that before 4 to 5 pm my uh, application receives a lot of traffic so it might be we need to improve we need to add some more resources for that so in that kind of scenario, you can uh, add the resources like uh, if your traffic's increased by so much percent, so you can increase the traffic and uh, after that you can just reduce the resources. So that also helps reduce your cost and you know that uh, which version you are deploying for your DevOps and process and it help also helps to do the testing. In current scenario, there are a couple of tools available for infrastructure as a code, and uh, but there is a slight difference in infrastructure as a code and configuration management as a code. Uh, infrastructure as a code is purely managing and provisioning your infrastructure on the cloud or your on-premise environment. But configuration management as a code comes under uh, like how you are configuring your configuration files or parameters or such. So there are different tools 
like uh, Terraform, Cloud, Cloud Formation, Plumi, and Azure ARM templates. In this uh, session, I am going to talk about uh, a bit about the ARM templates because uh, ARM templates is uh, provided by Microsoft Azure and uh, they helps to miss your, automate your infrastructure. So there are two types of uh, infrastructure as a code tools is a uh, one is a third party tools and another one is uh, you know the cloud uh, provided tools. So cloud provided tools might be uh, like uh, Azure ARM templates and uh, cloud formation from AWS and uh, the third party tools are Terraform and Plumi and Google Cloud Deployment Manager for GCP. I will not talk here. Yeah, let me just go ahead. So before, if you are new to Azure Data Factory, so let's just uh, give you a uh, basic overview what Azure, Azure Data Factory is. Azure Data Factory is uh, basically a cloud-based ETL and hybrid data integration service. So this is, uh, it helps to create your data pipeline. Suppose you want to migrate your data, like your on-premise data to Azure, or you want to set up a job, okay, and which helps to copy one file from uh, one place to another place and then you process those files like in our case uh, it's like we we have a uh, job like uh, for transferring our board rates because uh, daily morning there are fx rate comes uh, in a one place and we have to process those board rates into some other folder and then it goes to our database so in that kind of scenario if you want to set up any etl process in cloud environment Azure Data Factory is very helpful. They provide actually the three types of activity. One is uh, data movement, and another is uh, data transformation, and then control activity. So it is a cloud-based uh, ETL service, or you can say data integration platform, which is uh, it is used to create uh, data-driven workflows. So workflows for uh, orchestrate and automate data movement activities. So with the help of that, you can just transform the data and optimize the process using the ETL scenario. It also helps to connect with the multiple data sources. Suppose you have uh, you want to migrate some data from AWS to uh, Azure. So in that kind of scenario, also Azure Data Factory is uh, very helpful because it provides uh, resources which uh, you can connect uh, in short. In short while, I will show you how exactly that happens. So the advantage, so basically how exactly it works is, uh, it's like suppose you want to transform your data like from AWS or, you know, to means like Microsoft Azure. So you can set up the ETL process. You can set up the data source and destination. And uh, in Azure Data Factory, you need to set up the data pipelines. And uh, after setting the data pipelines, you need to have a link services. Link services are nothing but uh, uh, like your uh, configuration files or configuration, configuration strings, sorry. So ETL pipelines in our on-premise uh, environment, like we use uh, sometimes SSIS. And uh, so like uh, that you will create uh, for the data factory, you will create the ETL pipelines for the data factory. Same thing it will do. And uh, for connection string, we will set up the link services and there will be data sets from source to destination. How you will, uh, you know, trigger, how you will get the data from source to destination. And uh, there will be also the triggers. So trigger will uh, basically helps to means trigger the job. You can say uh, like suppose I want to copy the file from folder A to B, you know, in some particular interval of time and uh, some particular time. So with the help of trigger, you can run the job. And this all uh, it is managed by integration runtimes. So integration runtime activities, there are different control activities, manage activities, yeah. So in today's uh, demo and the process, I am going to show you, we have a, uh, two different uh, folders. One is uh, there is a one storage folder like uh, in sync container and there is a st staging folder. So we are going to copy the file from, uh, you know, sync to staging. And then after that, after processing the file, we are going to uh, delete the files. So how exactly it will happen is we have uh, created the for three pipelines. One is for the development UAT and production. 
And uh, after creating these pipelines, uh, we will, with the help of ARM templates, we will automate the process of deployment from development to UAT and UAT to production. In development, we will have a few resources for creating the pipelines. One is uh, Azure Resource Group. Then there will be storage for storing our files. And there will be Key Vault, means because we don't want to expose our connection string. So we will use uh, Azure Key Vault settings for, uh, means for setting up uh, you know, the connection string. And there will be uh, Azure Data Factory which will helps to create a pipelines for that. And then there will be uh, Azure DevOps because we want to automate the process uh, with the help of Azure DevOps. So that's how it's going to be there. So let me show you in action. Actually, it's uh, because reading slide is like, okay. Okay, in current scenario, uh, as, I told, as I mentioned earlier, we are going to do is from one container to another container, we are going to process the files. We are going to copy the files. So let me show you in uh, currently in, sorry, let me close this. This is my storage containers. I have taken a Azure blob storage, so I need to move my files from uh, blob containers from sync to staging. So this is my sync and this is the staging. And for this process, I need to create a data pipelines. Okay, and uh, once I am able to do this process, like uh, means copying the file from one to another, and uh, so this is the only one activity I'm doing. Means like, uh, but for later on, if you want to do that, so you can add multiple more activities. So later, I'm, I will show you how exactly. Uh, currently, I haven't keep any validations in the pipeline. Then I will show how exactly we will do that. Also, for development, UAT, and production, we will uh, first. I am going to create for the development, and then with the help of ARM templates, I am going to uh, replicate the process for the UAT in production. So this process can be done in two ways. Basically, with the help of uh, ARM templates from Dev to QA and QA to production. There is a means like a, from a visual way you can upload the import, export, and import the direct ARM templates directly. And the second way is doing the automated, completely automated process by using Azure DevOps. So let me show you how exactly it happens. Is uh, okay. In currently, in current scenario, I have already created the data pipelines because uh, it takes some time, but. Uh, I will show you how exactly step by step how it happens. So this is my data pipeline. If you have any questions, so you can unmute and can ask, or maybe you can put in the chat box because I am not monitoring the chat box. Yeah, don't worry. I, I, we're, we're, I'm monitoring the chat. For okay. you. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah. So this is my pipeline I have created for the data pipeline I have created for that. And uh, it's quite simple uh, pipeline for moving the files from one folder to another folder. So what exactly I'm doing here is I'm getting all the files list, which is present in a uh, storage container. And it's like uh, in our case, we have a storage container called uh, sync for this pipeline, the development pipeline. And after reading the all files from a storage container, so this is my storage container sync. I'm reading all the files from here, and uh, then I'm filtering the files based on uh, it's like uh, suppose if you want to process only the text file or you want to process some you know some kind of uh, it's like out file or anything. So then I'm doing the loop for these files and copying to another container. After copying, I am do doing the delete activity. So how exactly I have created this? Let me show you. And there are data sets. So basically these data sets are uh, like your uh, it's like container location. So because uh, to link with your uh, pipeline to your storage container, because where exactly you are saving your file, you need uh, data sets basically. And uh, for that you need to create the connection because how you will uh, connect your uh, data pipelines to your uh, storage 
storage or any other service by using connection string and that connection string is nothing but a linked service here and uh, so if you can see here this is my linked service for azure blob storage and i'm using uh, azure key vault but to connect to the key vault we also need a, another link service which i have already created here so let me show you uh, one sample by creating one by one So first of all, basically, if we want to create a data pipeline, so we need to know a few things. First of all, uh, we should have any resource group and uh, let me go and create a uh, quickly a resource group. In my current uh, setup, I have done the naming conventions like dev, QA, and uh, production. So, means like uh, because it is very helpful when you are uh, means automating the process because you just need to pass the uh, environment variable here. Like, suppose when I'm going to create a pipeline, so I cannot pass uh, these parameters, uh, means like you know, hard coded or so because we have to increase the reusability so what exactly i will do is uh, i will make this variable as an environment variable in our data pipelines and uh, then i will pass this environment like that okay so that's why i have given my naming convention like if you see here it's like a data fac uh, rg dev prod and uat so i will save this as an environment variable and then pass so it's better if you are going to create a data pipelines and you are going to automate with your uh, Azure DevOps. So please, uh, you know, make the naming convention quite uh, better. Okay. And after creating uh, this resource group for uh, creating the data pipelines, what exactly we need is uh, because we need a storage account. We are going to store the files. And in a storage account, uh, we should have uh, two containers, like because we are going to copy the files from one container to another container. And in your case, it might be different, like uh, because it might be a scenario that you are going to copy the files from one blob storage to maybe some other, uh, you know, the blob storage or the network. So, but you can configure with the help of the linked services there. So let me go and create quickly uh, as your uh, storage account. So if you see here, my storage account name is also a bit uh, similar like that. It's not taking the hyphen, so it's uh, let's see. Oh, okay. I'm going to deploy in uh, RIS Europe region. Okay, for uh, I'm taking this standard account, and actually, I don't need uh, for this uh, because. There are different types of storage, like a locally redundant storage. Uh, basically, it will help to create only means one container, and uh, means you don't means like it will not be. Uh, suppose if there is a down down of the storage or maybe the Azure services, so it will help to maintain only that storage. Uh, you know, there will be three containers which will be you know um, do maintaining their services. But if it is a local uh, means like a zone redundant storage and geo redundant storage, so if the one data center is down, so another data center will be up for availability. Uh, 
So basically it's for your availability. For this demo, I'm just going to select the local storage uh, and this is a blob storage. So locally redundant blob storage. Okay. And uh, next is. This is Next, I'm going to create the key vault because uh, for connecting to the storage uh, account, I can pass the in data pipelines. I can pass the connection string as well, but uh, you know it's always better to I mean, you store the your key secrets in Azure Key Vault. I think by mistake I have created in a different region. So make sure your all data pipeline storage everything is in same region. Let me quickly delete this and uh, make in the same region. Okay. 